Uh, this is Richard from uh, Wisbeach Airsoft. We're just doing a quick walkthrough video. Run. <laughs> We thought we'd just um, just show the actual site that we've built up. Obviously, today is like our first just test day to see how it plays with a few players. We've already found a few bottlenecks and stuff. We're gonna have to change and build up. So this is our entrance. Just got a few signs up. This is a crossroads, it's kind of like the uh, middle of the site. At the moment we've got no cover here and this is one of our problems. So we're going to build up like with some portable pallets here in the middle. This is um, one side of the site so obviously players can head down there. They can obviously go off the side of the road as well and down to the right there and then also over there and that heads into the forest section which is you can see at the back there uh, so that's where right on the other side of that which I'll show you in a bit is a is a field so one team's going to start down here You see how you've got plenty of cover off the side of the road for moving up. You don't necessarily have to go down the road, but um, we're obviously going to build this up with cover so you can move up. We did pretty much a whole day the other day just clearing up. Uh, Stuff. We still want to leave in certain natural features, you know, that come with it being a disused lorry yard. At the moment, there's no water in any of the sort of dikes, but apparently they can fill up with heavy rain. Which is quite cool. There's another field there. Technically that's um, usable as well, but it's quite off the beaten path. We just can't, unless somebody's really, really flanking, we just can't imagine using that at the moment. Actually climbing on the vehicles and inside the vehicles is obviously out of bounds. But um, you can obviously go underneath them, around them. You can go off, off the side. Fields wise, you're not allowed into the extra fields, but you can, can obviously go down there and, and um, you know, push up on the side of the road from a, from, from a flank. Yes, but um, obviously the other team's got to be doing pretty good if you're getting to this sort of point. So we keep going down, got more off the side there. It's pretty thick there. So we've got the, um, what you can see now, these trees here are covering the uh, next portion of the land which we've got under negotiation we're trying to get that as well because there's some awesomely thick growth undergrowth there and it's like like what you see there but just you know so we, we could put this great um, hangar on the other side of it we'd uh, we'd love to start one team off there so but at the moment obviously we're starting to team off right down the right down the end there
there's more control points on the other bit which you'll see in a minute so uh, so that obviously um, means this team whoever starts here at the moment has to move quite quickly to and has to basically uh, if you've played games like a uh, battlefield it's, it's very one-sided at the moment so my team has to it's more of a challenge I wouldn't say it's um, unfair I say it's a challenge they've got to uh, take all the control points off the enemy the enemy don't start with the control points they've still got to rush out and get them but uh, but uh, yeah if the, if the other team is quick and is you know smart they can actually uh, they can actually get one of the major control points and make it quite hard on this team but eventually what we'll do is if the other team is dominating we'll have some control points down here as well so you can see here how we've uh, this land here pushes right through onto like a uh, like a garage type thing used to be used for uh, um, rifle shooting actually uh, like um, air guns like a club yeah, this video is going to be long I reckon oh man what the hell is that some crazy mushroom look at that freak walk around there right so eventually we'd like to get that bit so you can move all the way through this I mean look at this this is awesome stuff down there through there there's no water it's just um, it's just really really thick stuff and on the other side of this is a is a garage I don't know, you might be able to see it through there but this kind of reaches the end of the the site that we're willing to play at so that see at the moment we've only got this road and off the edges of the road and And then obviously go all the way through there and build in. So that's why we won the other bit because it sort of feeds onto this so well. And both sides will be equally, equally um, sort of square in size. We're joined by this this road, so you can see a lot of battles happening. You know, on the main road, and you can see a, a lot of potential for people if they want to. There's always somebody that wants to skirt around the outside or make a different way from everyone else. That's why we want to run the conquest sort of style with the capture points. So there's no preset times. People can just uh, play the game how they want to play. Play as a team, play not as a team, whatever they want. Um, they've got the three hours to, you know, just have the fun. Try and capture as many points as possible. I'll show you one of the capture points in a minute. Windy. The wind's not bad actually. It's like because of the high trees. I mean, yeah, it comes in a bit off the fields. If it gets really bad, we can uh, always string up more of that green netting. Part and parcel though, isn't it? So we're imagining like we're a team, I don't know, we'll say yellow starting right now. Poor bastards, they're waiting for me. During the week this road's actually in use. The lorry's turning around, so any cover we do in this particular section can't be built or permanent. We've got a forklift over there, so we'll uh, use like like pallets and uh, build up cover and then forklift them on game day. So 
So there's quite a lot of potential off the side there before you actually reach that field. So that's all usable. And they're gonna play rush. Right. I'm gonna be about three minutes if that's all right. Huh? It's gonna be three, three minutes, four minutes, and I'll be right back. I like down here. On the right hand side, it can be a bit of a, well, we found it's a bit of a bottleneck. But I don't know how many of them use this side. So you can crawl underneath the hedges and potentially get a right cheeky shot on someone. Or you move down the sides and then come up. What the hell's that? Some sort of road scrubbing thing? See how we're moving into some of the uh, thicker woodland now. What we've got is like a cross section here and a path which leads up to the side of the hangar and field. We've got a control point over there, uh, which is the first one that people will get to, or should be the second one. I think we've set the other one up on the other side today. And then uh, some more cover over there. We had to put that there because it's a little bit straight here. I'll tell you what, I think you can actually see the control point flashing. We wanted to um, have it so that um, people can see who owns the control point, like in Battlefield 3, you know, beforehand. So, um, so that way, when spawning from control points, you can you can visibly see that your team control that, and then you can spawn off it. Other. Otherwise, you obviously have to walk to the next closest one, and that just saves um, saves a lot of people walking to the wrong one to spawn. So if yours isn't owned, just walk back to the next one you own. Obviously, if you don't own that, you have to walk back to your non-capturable base. But Or have they not put the control box out? <laughs> right, well, there should be a control box here for capturing this one. This here apparently gets completely full of water. I can't quite picture it right now, to be honest, so at the moment it's quite easy to assault this, but same as that one there, filled up with water. But and then obviously that bridge there and that one there will be the only way to cross. Um, but I'm not picturing it at the moment because... But it's not windy yet, is it? So obviously up there you can go towards the hangar. The hangar is... Uh, we're actually really loving that. Obviously that's where our safe zone is inside. But, um, but we're liking the idea obviously for night games and stuff. We're going to pin some, uh, some uh, floodlights up all around the, uh, the perimeter. Um, and... Uh, I think that will be really cool because obviously it will, it will uh, provide nice safe light areas if you know what I mean for people to move about in but then obviously if they want to they can they can move off the beaten path a bit um, maybe run pistol only games or something uh, or single shot or something you know so it's starting to get a bit thick now I might head back up this side So, that's why we need the other bit of land. Well, we can play without it, but it'd be nice because this side, there's just so much more size to it than on the other side. Now, if a team comes down and actually manages to get this control point, they could potentially, because of the height advantage and the cover, they can actually shoot. You know, it's going to make it very difficult for an attacking team to take this. So, if the other team that has the advantage, so to speak, doesn't get this at the start of their game, I think it's to their detriment. I think if the other team then manages to get this, 
So you see how here the uh, red team control the control point at the moment. There's going to be one of these boxes on all the control points. Um, it's actually a combination of switches to get your lights to come up, but they'll start in neutral, so they'll be flashing green. And then obviously if you're a red team or you're a yellow team on the tape, you can flick the switches to get to your um, your particular colour. So and um, yeah, we're not going to tell you the combination. I think it's the whole point, you know. So um, you know, it'll take an extra few seconds to capture the point. And then, uh, which is, um, you know, a bit more like a, a bit more like how the, you know, Battle for the Three will play, or plays, because obviously um, it takes a few seconds to capture a control point in which the enemy can obviously stop you doing it. Um, so yeah, you can keep going down, um, goes for another 50, 60, 70 yards down there, I think, maybe more. Um, but I'm just going to show you this through here. I mean, it's fairly obvious borders, but um, but we will get a, a map in the safe zone, a big laminated one. So the fastest bit for an attacking team at this point would obviously be straight across here. And trying to find a way through the. Ah, oh, you know what? I've just been stung. How's that for advertising? Right. Uh, okay, we knocked through a hole in this fence up here. Which leads to another control point, which is we built this one up quite a bit because obviously it was in a field, so we uh, we needed to do something with it. Oh, the hell was that? Right, here we go. So you come through there, and now we're over to the open field. Um, it's hard to do something with open field, to be honest. So. Um, what we're going to do is um, we don't want to play too close to the house I mean there's official laws on it and whatnot and we looked up but um, so we we might fence off to those do things but I think it's obvious that you don't need to play that close that hedge there is a boundary anyway to the car park so um, so it's basically just going to be in and around here really um, I'm not too worried about the house there. So you can see there's another one flashing away. Oh, red team's done a right around here, didn't he? Right. There was barbed wire going all the way across here. We stripped that one out. Some of it we can't take out because at some point they want, you know, they might want to revert it and whatnot. So what we're going to do is um, today, test-wise, it's just uh, it's just barbed wire, well, obviously we're just cautioning people, but um, we're going to build with these uh, pallet panels, the green fencing down each side of it. So not only will it to cover it up, it'll also provide an extra bit of cover there that people can move down. Um, and we think that's important for both sides. Uh, this is the start location for the other team. It'll be through here, um, which is actually going to be the car park. Um, at the moment, because there's not too many people showing up, so it's um, it's uh, my parking in the main area. But uh, it's an electric gate, and uh, we're a bit worried about obviously long-term abuse on that. So what we're going to do is, as soon as we can actually get the find the key for this padlock, which has been there about 100 years, we will uh, crack that open, and then uh, basically people can just drive in there and then park in this ginormous field. Um, we thought it would be better for parking and for the long term and also play wise we would have to fence off yet another portion of the field and we just don't want to do that so so this is all going to be car park safe zone camping area whatever if we decide to you know, run 24 hour and then uh, obviously um, we're probably going to fence this off from the we like we like the other areas and stuff see there's some barbed wire already taken down Go, go in this skip. 
Um, yeah, so we'll fend this off and in that way the cars are protected from any potential BBs that come this way. Um, but really, I mean, nobody should be firing on this bit because it's, uh, it's a non-capturable base. And um, yeah, let's let's be honest. If the uh, team have let it get this far, then they're not doing a great job, are they? So, not considering the uh, how how fast they can spawn from this particular point. So, and they've got cover there to run to, and they've obviously got cover there to run to. And there, I'll show a really good bit actually. And oh, they've been busy fencing this off while I'm not here. So. Uh, this one's going to be fenced off. We're going to cut it back to there. Fence it off, like I said, on the other side. So then, this people can move down here. I quite like the idea because what it does, especially especially during night games, it can be awesome because people can come down here for um, moving up on this hangar. And if you think about, the, you know, there's going to be if if the other team somehow manages to force people back this far then they've got a, an assault point through here and down the other end of the field there's like a horse the X horse building there so that goes into somebody's garden so we've the guy who owns the land so we fence that off because we don't want to use that that goes through to the car park, so we're going to fence this one off as well. It's never ending the work, innit? So uh, this is what today's about. It's just our first game, and we're uh, seeing how it plays, where the whole, you know, because we could only do X amount before the first game. I think we've done quite a lot. Uh, this here is going to be left open. Um, we're going to put sign-ups here, you know, mags out, that kind of thing, and that way people can go from the car park to here, down that path, in quite a short amount of... Um, amount of time and obviously people are arriving before gameplay starts obviously anyone late has obviously got to, got to wear goggles um, but um, safety glasses but yeah I think uh, that'll be fine so all people have to do this is the main hangar so they've just got to walk down there obviously from the car park and and then obviously bring some stuff whatever they're going to do and once they're in the hangar obviously that's where the shop and um, everything else is going to be uh, there's food at dinner time as well uh, we've got um, um, Paul's uh, wife is basically cooking um, burgers and I think she's doing chips as well, I think. So uh, I think it said something about £2.50, I think, we were talking about the, you know, working out the prices. And I didn't think that was too bad for burger and chips. So we strung up this net in. That's one of the first things we wanted to do. Just to separate, obviously, because there are other businesses uh, here. They're all fine with the airsoft and whatnot. So, but um, well, look at that. I think they got tired of waiting for me. It looks like it's on the prowl. What was that you want me to tell you where the enemy are? How, no, about, no. how, about, how about no? <laughs> <laughs> where are they? Where are they all? No, I'm dead because I'm stupid. Oh, are you? Yeah, I was pulling a thorn out of my, out of my hand. Oh, really? Which, what, type, what, what direction are you spawning from? I'm defending. You're defending, right? So, now. right. I'm defending. Right. Well, that. There you are, you learn all the tricks now, look. We're talking to the internet right now, but not yet, but we will be. <laughs> High internet. High internet people. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, now it's good that we're in this little test game, because, you know, there's a few little issues and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, I heard you found a couple, if you know what I mean, already, while I was fixing my gun. Shock. Shock. <laughs> it's good, though. It's ad. Yeah. What the hell is he defending? Skip. No, he's dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. he's dead, is he? So where are you respawning from for this game then? Look, it's it's rushed, like a battlefield. Yeah. So we can just defend. Right. Right. I, I mean, just technically, I, I could defend. I could uh, respawn in the hut. And yeah. Right. Push out if I wanted to. But um, I might just. How do they push on the hut then? And what, at what point do you stop? I went, went, one hit dead. Right. When I'm dead, I fall back to the third base, which is the tile wall. Right. And then when I'm dead, we go back to the tree base. Right. Okay. 
They make it complicated now. I liked my one, Conquest. It was so easy. Yeah, but it ran too quickly. It ran too quickly? That's because um, you're rubbish. Oh, no, no, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you you were the, the winner. What? Sorry, you were too good. <laughs> um, yeah, we kind of just... Um, we, I think we just moved a bit quicker than the, than the other team. Yeah, yeah. So we just controlled more, more area straight away. That's what I said. I said it's about the team. If they're, if they're not willing to, to put a bit of pace on, they, they lose their advantage at the start, you see? Yeah. Apparently, the bottom left here, did it? Right, I'm going to finish up this um, video because I want it to be uh, actually it's probably a bit too long for the internet right now but oh well, might cut it up a bit. Ads, you alright? It's a rush, so we've got conquest and rush. Just like Battlefield 3. Eventually for Rush, we'll do um, a station hey. similar to... Um, you alright mate? What's up? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Knee pads. What a wussy. Right. So eventually what we'll do is rush stations. You've got to uh, deactivate and obviously uh, set on a timer, keypad, that kind of thing, much like what we've, um, what we've done already with the uh, control stations. So obviously down in that ditch there, there's a bit of cover, so it's good watching them play, because obviously uh, you start to see where the uh, advantages, disadvantages are. Team red. Team yellow must be pushing up. Alright, I think we're going to call that quits because I want to play some airsoft. Alright, I hope you enjoyed that. It's been uh, Richard from uh, Wisby Chairsoft.